What's up guys, it's True from Taylor Tech. Today I'm gonna to be talking about something a little bit different. I'm gonna be talking about my garden outside. I was looking for a easier solution than having to drag the hose all the way across the yard, which is a pretty good ways. And then having to reel it back up when we're done using it. I basically wanted it to be able to water itself based on if it rained or not and a certain time of day where it would turn on and turn off by itself without us having to do anything for it. Now let's go outside and I'll show you a little bit about what's going on and then we'll come back in and I'll sh give you some more details about the, uh, the core recipes and what goes into basically automating it. Alrighty guys, so here's the garden out here. Uh, we are a fair distance away from the house. That's why it's kind of a pain to bring the hose all the way down here to water it every day. So uh, we got a couple tomatoes and add a few more, probably cherry tomatoes there, some bell peppers, cucumbers, jalapenos and some strawberries we're gonna try. There's some lettuce in the corner. Yeah, I'm not much of a green thumb, but I try. So I'm sure I'm doing a few things wrong, but oh well. But the, the main thing here is, is this rain barrel type thing. It's actually just a, an old barrel I had that I used for my pool, but I'm not using it anymore. So the way it works is there is a, uh, an old sump pump in here, similar to this one. And uh, it's an old backup sump pump, runs off 12 volts. And sitting at the bottom, the water level is about right here or so. This is uh, about the max. As you can see, the drain from the garden comes into here, refills it, and then there's an overflow on the other side. As you can see there, it drains back into the pond if it gets too full. In the garden here, we have this plastic, which needs to be fixed a little bit, but you get the idea. The plastic runs along the bottom of the soil with some corrugated drain tiles on the bottom so the water kind of stays at the bottom, but if it gets too full, it will raise up and it'll go out of this pipe here into the barrel. So the, the pump will pump up the water. Come up here. It'll water. Drip, drip, drip. I just drilled some 1 16th inch holes into this PVC. and uh, it waters it. It only turns on for about five, ten, five to 10 seconds I have it set up for. It'll wait 10 minutes. It'll turn on for another 10 seconds, wait another about 10 or 15 minutes, and then it will uh, turn on once more and then that's it for the cycle. I have it cycled twice a day, one at sunset and one at sunrise, and, or before sunset. As you can see, it just turned on by itself. It was just good timing there. I actually didn't physically turn it on, but I'll turn it on again with my tablet here. Now this is connected through smart things, which it doesn't have to be, but it can be connected through smart things. Um, if you want it to be fully automated to run based on the weather and the sunset and sunrise, you can connect it through your smart things with a smart plug the way I have it, or if you just want to use an old fashioned uh, timer for landscape lights or something like that, you could do that as well. So I'll turn it on again, my tablet here. So you can see these flowers are getting their water. And then all along here again. I'm just gonna turn it off again because I don't wanna give it too much water. But that's the idea. And the, the way it's getting power is through this extension cord here. This is not running 120, it's running 12 volts. So I just have this cord run along the fence and then into the garage over there. And if this thing does run low, obviously if it rains, this thing will fill up with uh, excess water and it'll drain into here. But if it doesn't rain, um, I can actually rotate this flower box out of the way to the filler cap, which is right in this area. And uh, that, and then I could fill it up with the cap there. So I don't have to worry about this thing running dry and then running the pump dry. I should have put a little sight glass in there. So if you if you try this, you might want to put a sight glass in there so you can see the water level. But uh, I'll leave I'll leave a link to everything that you would need for this project. Everything that I have here is just stuff that I had laying around. I had all this PVC laying around. I had the barrel laying around. 
I even had this planter box lying around. So literally everything in the pump, the pump I had lying around was an extra pump. So I just made it work for me. So uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comment section below and I will see you inside. All right, so here's the garage with the smart plug there. Excuse the mess. Um, this is just an iHome Wi-Fi smart plug. You can see that little green LED light is just saying that it's connected. And uh, that little H next to the plug tells you if it's on or not. So I, I'll go ahead and turn it on with my tablet real quick so you can get an idea. See it clicked on. I clicked off. So that pump, the, the pump ran for a few seconds there while I just had it on. So I have the way I have it stepping down from 120 to 12 volts is through actually through this uh, old computer power supply unit. I don't necessarily recommend using one of these because not everyone has one laying around, but uh, I need to tidy this up obviously. I just finished with this, but I just have the 12 volts coming from, or 120 coming from the wall, going through this, and then these wires here, step it down to 12 volts, uh, 12 amps. And that runs through there, uh, through the garage there, and then around there, and back over in the corner of the yard to the garden. Now, like I said, this is a smart plug. It's connected to my smart thing system. Any old smart plug will work. Or if you wanted to just to turn on once or twice a day, you could get one of those cheap landscape light timers or uh, holiday light timers, anything like that. Anything that'll turn on and off and that's reliable. You don't obviously don't want the pump running too much. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so as you can see, this is my core piston. If you're not familiar with core, check out the link in the video description to learn more about it. As you can see, it's really simple. If time is 8, 8 o'clock a.m. or 6 p.m., uh, run the pump. So turn on for seven seconds, turn off. Wait 10 minutes, turn on. Wait seven seconds, turn off. Wait 15 minutes, turn on, seven seconds again, and so on. So as you can see, I only have it running for about seven seconds at a time because for the pump that I'm using, that's perfect time. It just, it only needs about seven seconds and then it'll drain the water out of the lines and water everything that I need water. I'm sure at your application will be different, so keep that in mind. You can add a lot of different variables with this. For example, if it rains that day using a water sensor or the forecast for the day through a different smart app, you can have it not run for that day. So you can get very creative with it. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I know there's a lot of more expensive, better options out there for an automated sprinkler system but this is literally everything I had laying around my house. I had the extra PVC, I had the barrel, I had the, uh, the pump, and I just put it all together and now I got an automated system. So I know there's a lot of better options out there as far as like a ratio or however you pronounce it, sprinkler system, but this works for me, this is what I did. So I hope I helped you out and save a few bucks as opposed to going to buy one of those expensive systems out there. Uh, maybe you can try this at home, maybe it'll work for you. Every application is going to be a little bit different, so keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like the video if you liked it, and I will catch you guys in the next video.